The most epic party in history. The Field of the Cloth of Gold, June 7th to the 24th, 1520. From June 7th to the 24th of the year 1520, King Henry VIII of England and King Francis I of France took part in a diplomatic tournament known as the Field of the Cloth of Gold. The two monarchs were in their youth when they hosted this glorious event. They entertained each other and the over 12,000 attendees through fantastic banquets and grandiose spectacles. All was richly decorated in a spectacular display of wealth, most notably with wildly expensive cloths of gold. English and French relations, however, had been rocky for centuries, with hundreds of chevauchés, pitched battles and sieges fought against one another. The two fought during the Hundred Years' War, which had taken place between 1337 and 1453, pushing the English land further onto the continent, only to be largely lost in the 1450s under an ill Henry VI. Tensions between Francis I and Henry VIII had grown quickly. Only seven months after becoming King of France in 1515, Francis overshadowed Henry's greatest military success at the time of capturing Tournai by conquering the far more powerful Duchy of Milan. But the field of the cloth of gold was part of a larger plan for peace, known as the Treaty of London, signed in October 1518. The Treaty of London included most of the major European powers, and it was agreed that none of those nations who signed the treaty would initiate a war with the other. This was in the hope that together they would all resist the strength of the growing Ottoman Empire in the southeast. As part of the Treaty of London's diplomacy, for instance, Henry's prize tournée was returned to France. The key figure involved in this pact for supposed universal peace was Cardinal Wolsey, Henry VIII's chief minister. Henry VIII was initially attracted to the idea of an international peace treaty, partly because he wished to act as Christendom's peacemaker, but also partly because he could not afford another war. With the support of Henry, Cardinal Wolsey was appointed papal legate, which is a representative of the Pope who could act and speak on the Pope's behalf. Using this immense power, Wolsey would become the principal organizer of the field of the cloth of gold. The ceremonious event took place in as much of a neutral location as was possible, right in the countryside, between English Guinea and French Adra. It was no ordinary tournament, for the area was transformed from a simple countryside to an ornate and bustling city in a little over two weeks. Large extravagant tents were erected to house the 6,000 English and 6,000 French men, women and children, accompanying King Henry VIII and King Francis I. To show off his own wealth and magnificence, Henry erected a temporary palace for the occasion, though the word temporary doesn't quite give it justice. The palace was huge, with each side measuring over 300 feet long. It was bricked to a height of 8 feet, with timber frames reaching as high as 30 feet. The timber was then covered with canvas painted to look like bricks. At the entrance, there were famously ornate gold fountains that perpetually produced red wine. There was a great desire to keep the wine flowing, as the English brought over 40,000 gallons of wine to the festivities, alongside 14,500 gallons of beer. This was the equivalent of four pints for every single guest for each day. The palace also had brick towers, and upon entering, attendees would have been struck by the palace's use of 5,000 feet of clear glass. So much glass, in fact, that the French called it the Crystal Palace. The palace also included a chapel and a gallery, as well as individual compartments for Henry VIII, his Queen Catherine of Aragon, Henry's sister Margaret, and Cardinal Wolsey. Yet another way to display extravagance was through the feasts. They were large in number and extremely varied. Alongside the never-ending wine and huge quantities of meat, the English brought over 20,000 fish, including a dolphin. Great effort was made during the Field of the Cloth of Gold to make sure that neither Henry nor Francis's egos were put into question. Among other complicated logistics, exact timings were calculated for each king's entrance and exit to events so that neither seemed favored above the other. This certainly didn't stop them from trying to show off to one another, however. During the jousts, Henry managed to hit a knight with such force to the head that his lance broke the events in archery also allowed each king to boast which nation was the better skilled with the bow. 
Throughout the tournament's activities, the king would usually remain on the same side, except famously for a spontaneous wrestling match between the two of them. The wrestling match was thought to have been initiated by Henry, but won by Francis. To conclude, as the historian Glenn Richardson has shown, the tournament was not simply a party for peace or the site where two drunk kings wrestled, but an event organized by Cardinal Wolsey to confirm the King of France and the King of England's commitment to the Treaty of London's universal peace. For the two kings, however, peace could never be sought simply for harmony's sake, but must have additional benefits, such as securing the loyalty of their own people and the respect of their rivals. Therefore, the tournament was also the field where Francis and Henry battled using weapons of spectacle and magnificence. It was a royal competition of who could prove themselves the greater defender of the Christian faith, the more chivalric leader of Europe, and the wealthier patron. In the end, Henry would side with the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V against Francis when Francis invaded Italy the following year, and with that, the peace would be broken. The marvel the field of cloth of gold evoked from contemporaries, however, as well as Henry and Francis's continued exchanges of letters and gifts into the 1520s and 30s, convey the grand mutual esteem and admiration that was created out of a memorable meeting in an everyday field of cloth of gold.